Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad you could make it. So we've got a bunch of folk all from uh, around the country, and I'm excited about this morning. Uh, we're here to prepare for winning in 2024. Um, so first of all, I just want to thank everyone. Um, you know, obviously some of our team are here, and then folk uh, from different um, organizations uh, around the country. We are here to, to serve the industry. We're here to um, uh, hope everyone can succeed. The market is way big enough for all of us to succeed. In fact, um, I think we can all do a lot better and um, in, a, in a greater scheme of things. Let me just share my screen and then we can get started. Um, there we are. I guess it's about winning in 2024. Um, we really want to um, have an amazing 2024. I think if I were to have a show of hands and we're, front of, we're all in front of each other today, I want a show of hands is how tough is this market in 2023? And um, I think even, it's, even the most experienced and high-performing agents would say, yes, it's been one of the toughest years uh, that we can, we can talk about. Um, and I mean, with interest rates going up, uh, just the just less buyers in the market, the volume of sales are down, and that's really the issues. Is really the volume of sales are down sometimes twenty to forty percent in certain regions across the country, and so uh, sellers have really um, struggled with affordability, which means that um, you know there's just there's just less volume. Sellers haven't been prepared to sell. Uh, I think only certain parts of Cape Town have really. Um, not being as as uh, affected by that, and even certain areas of Cape Town, which have traditionally been good areas, uh, hot areas have have also started to struggle a little. But there's always hope, and um, this is why we need to be planning ahead now. And so, someone, some I heard someone say the other day, the market gives you, you get what the market gives you, you get what the market gives you. So if the business is down thirty percent, and we're doing the same our business and volume is going to be down 30%. So um, what we want to do is we want to do more than what the market uh, is going to give us. So um, if the market is going to go down another 20% next year and we're doing the same as what we're doing at the moment, then it goes to show that our volume will be down about 20% next year. However, uh, if, we, if we plan better and adjust what we're doing now for the new year, that means we have a much better chance of, in fact, not only uh, you know surviving but also thriving. And in, and in, and it's and I think it's important for us to also have an approach in how we look at the market. When the market is tough like this, there are many agents are saying, "Should I really be doing this?" And there's really opportunity. Those uh, for us, those agents that are prepared to be professional, prepared to stick it out, um, we actually have a huge opportunity to actually thrive in the new year. So sometimes um, it's best to have the attitude, the softer the market, the better I'll do. Um, as uh, we're gonna go, as Benjamin, Benjamin Franklin says, by failing to prepare, you're preparing to fail. So th this is really what the session is, to say, what are some of the key principles that we wanna be talking about um, so that we can have the best chance of success in, in the new year? Just firstly, a little bit about myself. Um, I do a bit of business coaching. I've, I've coached business owners over the last five or 10 years. I give them a bit, of, a bit of time and either to get them through a particular hurdle in what they're going through, um, just to unlock the, uh, lock what they're going through and then, they, and then they can then succeed. Sometimes I have a challenge and I'll just help them through to that. Sometimes businesses just need a bit of a, uh, business owners just need a bit of accountability. And so I do that through my business, uh, quick business coaching. Uh, and then increasingly, I'm offering uh, coaching services to the real estate industry as well and training and, and that kind of stuff. Um, I run a chorus property group. Uh, we manage rentals and sectional title schemes across Cape Town and Joburg. Uh, we've got about a thousand rentals um, in Joburg and Cape Town that we manage. And then we also do, we've got about 20 complexes um, that we manage as well. And that's both those divisions We've got lots of opportunities. For example, we, we, we busy uh, filling a thousand units, social housing development in, uh, in Cape Town at the moment, in Goodwood, um, in Mill Martin Nova, I've seen that big thing next to, um, uh, next to the casino. Um, so there's, there's lots of different projects we're working on. I also wrote the book on property management in South Africa called The Expert Landlord. 
And then lastly, uh, we, we've got a rapidly growing team under co the Chorus Property Group powered by EXP. We have partnered on our sales side of the business. We've partnered with EXP Realty, which is very exciting because of the technology they provide, the disruptive model, and I'm very excited about how our team can take that model and succeed. Uh, we all work remotely around the country and we've got a rapidly growing team. It's 22 agents at the moment. And um, you know, that is growing quite quickly. We offer a lot of support from the chorus perspective, chorus and mentoring and, and coaching so that uh, agents can succeed. Um, okay, so um, by failure, we've said by failing to prepare, you're preparing to fail. So preparation um, does take time. So what we're going to go through today, we're not actually going to say, okay, we're going to answer every single question about um, about uh, about you know planning for 2024. I'm going to create more of a framework, and then we're going to have to then go off and and um, do a bit of homework. Um, so that's why I did provide the agent um, workbook. You should have got it on email. If you haven't, um, just drop me a message, and I will send one to you. Okay, so um, it's there. You can use that as your foundation. So what we're going to basically be going through for the next hour, hour uh, we will finish by our latest car past 10, going through some principles. What are some basic foundational principles that we should bear in mind uh, so that we can have a successful uh, um, start, start doing that now so we can have a successful 2024? Um, let's go through goal setting. That's critical. Um, having goal setting principles as a foundation. Um, a, a lot of what drives us is our goals, uh, which is basically our why. And then we'll go through uh, an agent business plan. Okay, cool. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be good. Um, if you've got any questions, um, I'm happy to answer them now. Just to take yourself off uh, mute and, and ask the question. But otherwise, I will leave time at the end for questions as well. And just lastly on that point. Um, oh, yeah, sorry, before I go there. Um, I just want to acknowledge, uh, when I put this program together, I want to acknowledge Monopoly training. I took some... Uh, Lee, uh, I'm a good friend of Lee DeVet, who runs Monopoly training. They do, they do uh, agent training uh, around the country, especially in Cape Town. And um, I've got some ideas from him. Glover U, Jeff Glover, Jeff Glover from Glover U, they run a lot of coaching programs in the States. I, I learned some, some stuff from them. And then, you know, the Brent Bow Go podcast. Of course, there's numerous other resources that, that I learned from, but then also just my own personal experience of being in sales management for close to uh, 25 years. Okay, cool. Um, so just, just to let you know that what I'm offering those that want it, I would highly recommend that, that each of you do it, is a free coaching session. Uh, and I'm happy to even do it to two because what we need to do is um, planning takes time. We, you know, we may need sometimes like half a day of, of planning uh, to, to bed everything down, to get our thoughts together so that when we go into the new year, we're going in, um, going in running. We don't want to be, um, ideally speaking, we want to know exactly what we're, going to, what we're going to do, what our planning is, et cetera. But as we go through the plan today, you'll see that there's a bit of work, which I think is exciting. But, but that's what business is. Each of us are business owners. I was, in fact, um, uh, my twin brother um, chatted with me this morning. Was, I sent him a little document about some strategy and my, and my thoughts and what, I, what my strengths are and what I should be focusing on in my business units and so forth. And he had come back saying, well, what about this? What about that? And you've got to say no, you've got to do this. And I thought to myself, Yo, I have got a whole lot more, more, more homework on, um, on, on rejigging uh, my, my personal strategy and my strategy with the businesses. Uh, and that's good. We, we, we're here to make each other better. We're here to grow one another. Um, and, and as a business owner, this is what we do. We, we do need to spend some time on the, at the top of the mountain um, strategizing, thinking about where we're at, where we actually are going, and how do we get there. And then so that when we're back in the trenches, we are productive with our time and, and our strategy. So the more effort you invest up front, the clearer the path to success will be. Uh, hopefully we can, we can understand that, that, that principle. Okay. So um, section number one is going through principles. Is, is get your family on the same page. Now, that could be your, your partner. It could be if you're staying with your parents, for example. Uh, some of the youngsters are mentor or staying with their parents still. Uh, just the environment, the family or home environment that you're in, you want to get everyone on the same page, uh, ideally. Because as a business owner, I just experience, if I've got support from my spouse, uh, which I do, fortunately, um, 
it it makes my life uh, and uh, and the the walk towards or the 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 drive towards where I'm going so much easier. When there's one person going, you can go so far. When there's two people going in the same direction, it's not double as efficient. It's it's twenty times more efficient. There was a test I, I read the other day that, uh, of that, but um, nevertheless, to say that when 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 there's unity uh, in the home front, whatever your home front looks like, uh, it's really uh, it really helps with your uh, with your strength and with your productivity. If, for example, you need to do a viewing on a Friday night, or you got your Saturday mornings, which you have to, you, you know, you, you've decided that you're going to dedicate your lead generation. If your spouse or your partner is supportive of that, um, then uh, then it's going to make your life a lot easier. Eighty percent of estate agents, um, they did a study in the states. Eighty percent of estate agents uh, quit uh, within the first five years. Um, so you really want your partner on board as you as you go into uh, as you as you build into in your career. Um, and it's also being on the same page with regard to goals. Uh, being on the same page with, with regards to your values. What do you value? Um, it means just constant communication with your with your spouse. Uh, you know, maybe you want a weekly check in with your with your partner or your um, or your significant other or or even an accountability partner about where you're going. Um, so, and guys, um, what really helps is understand is, is I'll leave it this way, just um, share feelings too. I don't want to get too deep in that, but but sometimes um, sometimes. Uh, uh, as guys, we need to, we need to, so sometimes what our, our female partners want is, um, our lady partners want is just to understand where we're at emotionally and our, and our feelings. So don't want to touch on that, on, on that studio too much, but just bear that in mind. Um, and as you share your feelings, uh, you actually get more, uh, more support. Um, my wife, maybe it's just me, for me personally, she wants to know how I'm feeling, where am I at? And that alone, because if my temperature is, if I'm unhappy, uh, then, then she's not supportive of my goals. If she knows that I'm, I'm satisfied and happy, well, then she knows I'm in the right direction. Anyway, take it as you want. Um, okay, another principle is show up for work at the same time each morning. Remember, we're talking about the basic principles, guys. Um, the first thing is get your family on the same page, whatever your family looks like. The second thing is show up for work at the same time each morning. I know it's a simple thing. <clears throat> All these principles, by the way, um, uh, all these principles, by the way, are quite easy to implement, but they're easy to not implement as well. So that's a challenge with it, is that they're easy to do, but they're easy to not, not to do as well. Um, so you really need to really need to keep it going and and um and we'll get to the goals and 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 often the goals help us keep these habits going. But show up for work at the same time each morning. The challenges we as agents have is that those of us that work independently, some of you may work in an office that you need to be there at a particular time. But the opportunities we have is the flexibility. We can go and watch our kids sport at two o'clock in the afternoon because we can, and that's a privilege and we should. However, we need to be doing the homework and discipline in the morning um, so that we have the flexibility to watch that sport at two o'clock in the afternoon. So we can then maybe get back to our desk at four. But the challenge with us as agents is that we don't have anyone, we don't have, um, uh, we don't have that necessarily that structural and that framework discipline. I, I was saying to some of our team um, the, the, the other day, uh, some of our sales team, about what it was when I did work for uh, a company I worked with, family business, is that you needed to be work at a, at a particular time or more, more of a corporate role. Uh, there might be more different operational stress, there might be other stresses, but there is a framework that you're working in. You need to be working at eight o'clock at eight o'clock, you typically take a half an hour lunch and, you know, it's kind of expected. It's, it's, it's a momentum. You kind of leave at five or you expect it to be there until five. Um, and uh, it's just that framework. Um, and you need to be on time on meetings. Um, my dad's on those meetings. So thanks, dad. Good to see you. You know, I tell you, 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 you pitch up at the meeting on time and you bring a pen and paper. There is that discipline which happens in, um, uh, in, in a corporate environment. We as estate agents don't have that. And therefore, we need to be very aware that we're creating our own disciplines and showing up for work at a particular time every day, no matter what, is, is a starting of that discipline. Um, and it, the results only come with disciplined, um, consistent hard work. And, and you see, this is in this market, uh, it is easy to succeed if you implement these things. Uh, 
in a tough market, if we're not doing, keeping the basics right, in a really good market, we can get away with ill discipline. In a tough market like this, um, we can actually succeed, but it does take consistent hard work and discipline. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about on this is an early morning routine. I know it's sometimes a flavor of the month at the moment. You've got the, the book, The 5 a.m. Club, uh, 5 a.m. Club. You've got the book, The Miracle Morning. Uh, these are all great books, and it gives you great um, ideas on, on how to implement um, discipline time uh, mornings. But it is, I mean, uh, you've, some of you may have read the, um, the book, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. They, they did a study on, on the best agents in Killer Williams in the early 2000s. One of the standards, one of the consistent things all these top performers have, these million dollar agents had, was an early morning routine. Uh, and the world's best uh, you know, performers, entrepreneurs, uh, what I'm seeing consistently is an early morning routine. It's quite funny, recently, I've, well, in the last couple of months, I've started having a, a five o'clock morning routine. And um, uh, it's quite funny, my daughters are saying, oh, you're, looking like, you're, you're, you're acting like grandpa now. You, he's like, you're getting up early. <laughs> of course, my dad always gets up early. And I was thinking about it, you know what? Actually, that is a big factor of success is getting up that early morning. I think, I think what happened during COVID was that we had that massive flexibility and I, I myself lost that habit. I'm getting that back again about getting those early morning habits um, happening. So I know exactly what I'm doing at five o'clock, half past five, six, et cetera. Okay, but we're gonna go a little bit more into detail uh, um, just uh, further on just now. Um, okay, so I've just seen consistently what I've read, what I've seen uh, is an early morning routine is good. So by eight o'clock in the morning, when you get to your desk, whatever time you get to your desk, you've had your quiet time, you've had your exercise, you've had your meditation, whatever it is for you, you maybe spend a bit of time with the kids or your spouse, uh, you're taking your kids to school, whatever, you, you've done that kind of stuff, you've actually ticked off a lot of stuff in your box, your boxes already, then you can start your day uh, on the front foot. Okay, another principle um, is working on yourself. So, you know, it, it's, a part question of, it's a question about being honest with yourself, really. Um, are we, are we honest where I'm at? It's not worries me, I'm terrible. It's um, it's saying, you know, I can get better. Um, and, and having a sense of self-appraisal, having a sense of self-awareness. I think one of the challenges, especially as guys I'm seeing in, the 40, in their 40s, um, and when divorces happen or, or things happen in their career or whatever, I actually think personally, and, and I don't want to be controversial, I think sometimes it's a lack of self-awareness. They actually are not understanding where they're at and being honest with that. Um, so, yeah, um, on, on that particular case, let's talk about a fixed mindset versus a growth, versus a growth mindset. And this is really uh, when we talk about us, our growth. So a fixed mindset versus a growth, growth mindset. And what obviously we want is a growth mindset. So a fixed mindset will say intelligence is static. An intellig um, growth mindset will say it, intelligence is developed. We can actually grow um, uh, over time. Uh, a fixed mindset avoids, avoids challenges. A growth mindset embraces challenges. And many years ago, someone said power is guarded by problems. So the more problems we embrace, the more responsibility we have. And that's actually the, the better we actually do in our career. So we don't want to run away from problems. It's not that we running towards problems, but that we embrace problems when they come. And problems and uh, are, are opportunities to solve. And we as, when we as business owners solve, um, solve problems, we succeed. That's where that's where the opportunity is. A fixed mindset said it's too hard. A growth mindset says, says I can train my brain. Um, fixed mindset says you can expect reward without effort. And growth mindset says effort is a path to mastery. It is, it is hard work. When I do agent recruitment uh, sessions, um, I have a session every second Monday evening to agents want to coming into the coming into the industry, and uh, so someone asked a question a few months ago. So, so where's uh, so what's the catch? I just said it's flipping hard work. It's blood, sweat, and tears. Um, you know, if you're going to do well in any career, it, it is just hard work. Hopefully, you can do smart work, and and this is kind of even what my my brother was saying to me this morning. Yeah, oh, sure, you can work hard, but can you change that strategy a bit, or do this, or have a different focus? Um, and we can do better. Um, so it's hard work, and then as we do that hard work, um, we can then um, we, we can then get better. Uh, fixed mindset ignores feedback. Growth mindset is to learn from feedback. It doesn't. When we get feedback, it doesn't touch our heart. It really just it's really just 
it's really just, uh, it doesn't touch who we are. And that's sometimes that fixed mindset is, you know, if you're going to give me feedback, it means that I'm a bad person. Uh, it's not about that at all. It's, it's, it's purely uh, depersonalized saying it's, it's, I'm helping you to get better. And I'm saying, well, I, I am secure in myself. I, I'm functioning. I just, I can't get better. Fixed mindset is threatened by the success of others and a growth mindset is inspired by the success of others. Um, so just those, those two things I've just said ahead um, above uh, getting your family on the same page and showing up for work at the same time each morning and working on yourself. These are small hinges. And, and someone once said, small hinges can change, can move big doors. So, so remember these things uh, as we have unity on the home front, as we have our disciplines and, you know, get to work on time. Um, and we make that work time because we can, and uh, we, we had some disciplines uh, and um, we have a, a growth mindset. Um, big things happen with that. So um, I just want to talk about the 90 day rule. Um, John Cheplak, who's a well-known coach in the state says, your future is your past. Your future is your past. And what the 90 day rule says, if you're doing activity now, you're going to see the results in 90 days time. So if your activities are not good now, it means that 90 days ago, you weren't doing the right activity. So we can't change the past, but what we can do is change the future. And what do we, how do we change the future? Let's look at what we're doing today. So let's think about the 90 day rule. Um, and so we need to know our goals and what, it, what is required to achieve this. And then we've got to do that diligently. Um, it also means uh, that we've got to focus on the input, not the output. Let's focus. We can say, well, uh, um, in fact, um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Jeff Glover says this. He doesn't celebrate when we've when, when the transfer happens, you know, when the money commission money comes in. In fact, I got a message from one of the guys today to say the transfer happened when the money's coming. When is the money coming in? Um, and that's great. We can have we can you know we can give the buyer and the seller a bottle of champagne. It's it's great celebratory for them. But our celebration is really the fact that we made that phone calls 90 days ago. That's what we've got to celebrate. So let's, let's think about the focusing on the input and the output. And you know, when I have the accountability meetings with um, our team, um, certain teams members every week, we, we're just talking about what is the activities that we're doing. And it's like, we're just looking at numbers on the page. Oh, I made 20 phone calls, 100 contacts or, or whatever. Um, we've got to celebrate that process. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, that's not money in the bank, but it's, it's, a, we've got to celebrate the input because that ultimately affects the output. Um, so we got to, we got to need to reframe it by analyzing what the, what the marketing, what prospecting we did, um, knowing that the outcome will follow if we do the marketing and prospecting correctly. So let's, let's focus on, on that. Um, and it, it does come down to, um, personal growth and, and self-improvement. It's the last point. I just want to talk about that. Um, is is having an active self improvement and and skills development program. What I've got, if you look at the page two on your workbook, um, there's a business sales skills and life development plan, and there's technology coaching. You can see this plan over here. It says technology coaching, accountability, mastermind, books, podcasts, and and get, we should write down what are the one to two one to two or one to three actions for each of these that we should be doing. So technology, maybe I'm going to learn about how the social media thing works or how TikTok works. Um, coaching, um, have I got that in my life? In some kind of most successful people, or very, a lot of successful people have some kind of formal coaching, even if it's a kind of a mentorship relationship rather than a coaching relationship, even if it is having a team leader or an accountability partner. What is my accountability? Uh, Mastermind, you can do that at conferences or just being at events. You sometimes are amongst other agents. Sometimes your mastermind can be as little as I can phone that, that colleague of mine or I'm having coffee with three colleagues of mine every month or every three months and where we're just chatting and talking about um, what's happening in the marketplace and, and how we can get better. Books, we should all be reading, guys. We should all be reading. Um, I, I, I'm not here to be, um, toot my own trumpet, but I've read 25 books this year so far and I probably... Holidays, I read some um, some novels, so I'll probably read another three or four by the end of the end of the end of the year. Now, most people will probably, if just reading one book in a year is an accomplishment, find a book or two. Um, in fact, I'm the part of the coaching group I'm at, 
um, one of the gentlemen in in our coaching group has actually um, I attend. Um, I get a, I've got a coach as well, and I attend a monthly board meeting with these with five or six other guys and ladies, and and as part of the coaching program. And um, I'm accountable. I've got my coaching call actually next week Friday. Um, so and and this gentleman's actually got got a book, a picture of a book of all the twelve books he's going to be reading next year every month. A book. Uh, if you want a list of books to read, good books to read, uh, let me know. Uh, just on real estate alone, there's lots and lots of good books. Um, then podcasts, guys, you can listen to your podcast a day. I listen to podcasts at one and a half times speed. You get used to it. Um, I can listen to hours of podcasts a day. What are you doing um, in the car? Um, what are you doing when you're doing exercise? Um, there's lots of written, lots of materials. Um, health, wealth, what are the kind of foundational things that you're doing? We're going to go through some of these um, goals in just now, but there's there's a lot. What scripts? Number 10, what scripts am I going to be learning? Um, what events am I going to attend? Uh, you need to be attending events so you can get in front of other agents. Okay. Um, to, for Mainly for networking purposes, so you're inspired by others. Okay, cool. Good. Um, and then um, last, the last principle is really accountability. So Brent Gove says, Brent Gove is um, EXP's largest uh, team leader. He's got 30,000 agents in his team and uh, just an amazing um, a guy. And a lot of, uh, you can actually just search Brent Gove and just watch, just listen to his podcast. Um, Jeff Glover, um, I think Live Large, I think something like that. John chaplet has got an amazing um, podcast, by the way. But um, Brent Gove says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Okay, accountability is crucial because it enables us to be to set to meet certain standards. So kind of like the reason one of the reasons that I have a coach and pay solid money for it is because I need to have homework and I need to I'm accountable for that next week Friday. So I'm because I'm paying money for this coach, I'm gonna to have to make sure that I do that homework because I'm not wasting my money, otherwise I'm gonna ditch the coach. Um, and then it also helps me with my clarity. Um, it helps me with, um, it just makes me better. And accountability is not about the other person holding me accountable. It's about me being accountable to the other person. Okay. Um, so it also, um, uh, it also helps you leaning into discomfort. So the, the work that we're doing and the hard, the hard work that we're doing, um, it, it's, we should be leaning into discomfort. We're not looking for comfort as we want to get better in business. It is not like everything is just going to be um, hell and hearty and, and all cool. Um, there is a sense um, of, of um, you know, I think that the younger generation nowadays doesn't quite see it. Um, I run out of mouth and sometimes for fun. And, and that's a part of the The point of it is, uh, is the hardship is that's the fun. Um, so, and having, being accountable means that when it is hard, we've got, the, we, we've got, a, we've got a supporter, or we've got someone to be accountable for, someone to support us. Um, and sometimes we're doing our activities, guys, every week, and we're not getting anywhere. An accountability partner can help us improve what we're doing or have a different eye or different perspective on what we're doing to adjust what we're doing. Um, so on this particular section, it's, it's ultimately about what you're making a decision to succeed. It's ultimately you making a decision to succeed. Okay, so, um, yeah. Um, so that's our first section. Um, as I said, to, to summarize, it's the, the, the just foundational thing that we want to put in place. It's uh, the habits and principles that we want to just put in place this year so that we can go into the new year and keeping these things happening. It, as I said, it's easy to do, but it's easy not to do. So it's getting your family on the same page, your home environment, ideally um, getting showing up for work at the same time, looking at having an early morning routine, um, working on yourself and being aware of having a learning attitude, a mentoring kind of a, a growth attitude, growth mindset, and being accountable in the best possible way you can. Okay. So this, let's go into goal setting. I think this is just, I'm very excited about this. In 19, we might have all heard about the study. In 1974, there was an MBA class study. Uh, the question was asked of the delegates, how many of you have a plan for your future? 80% said no. 13% said yes, but it was not in writing. 7% said yes, and they had a written plan for the next 20 years. Uh, we know what happened, 1974 MBA class study. 10 years later, follow-up program produced the following results. The 80% earned an average market wage. 
The 13%, that's the 13% who had goals but didn't write it down, earned 100% more than the average earners, in other words, double. And the 7% um, that did write, that did have goals and wrote them down, earned 10 times more than the 13% above. Now, I know that's very generalistic, and I'm not, I'm not saying it's a guarantee, but the bottom line, if we have written goals, we have a higher chance of achieving them. Written goals, if we have, have a higher of a chance of achieving them. Okay. So goals are your why. We talk about in real estate a lot about your why. Why am I going to make this phone calls every day? Why am I going to knock on doors? Why am I going to get up early in the morning and make sure I'm at my desk at 8 o'clock? That's your why. That's your driver of your activity. The goals determine your and your goals in the future determine your actions today. Um, your goals motivate you. It, I mean, it's just a great example where um, um, Clinton, actually, who's um, a colleague of mine in Cape Town, it was asked me about the weekend because I um, I seconded my brother who did it. He did the Outer Trail Cape Town hundred miler um, on the weekend. So he started at five o'clock on Friday afternoon. He finished at one o'clock on Sunday lunchtime. So that's forty four hours. 100 miles, um, and I, I seconded him for for t uh, 24 Ks. Um, as I said, it was mainly just a hike. But the bottom line, we, we had five hours to discuss. Um, I, I tried to keep not keep it too deep because he's in the middle of 100 miles. He had, he had already done 95 Ks and hadn't slept the night. Um, and anyway, he was telling me his, his, how he eats. Everything he was doing in his daily life is geared towards that 100 miler. What he eats, how he trains, how much he sleeps, it's all geared towards that 100 miler. Now, uh, that's, just, that's just not necessarily a relevant article to us. But, but if we have our goals um, and we need to write them down and we'll go through this, some framework now, that then determines how we act every day. So there's certain things, because my biggest goal in life is to, besides my faith still being intact and me loving my Lord, the second goal is that my wife is still, that we're hand in hand at the age of 80. So that determines what I do today. That means there's certain disciplines I do today in my family life and in my personal life and my commitments because that is my second biggest goal in my life. It does determine. It means I don't go clubbing every night. <laughs> it means that I've got to, you know, you know uh, be more responsible than I would otherwise be. Um, that, that's, just, that's just kind of an extreme example. But where we want to go in life determines what we do today. It is our why. Okay. So just another principle, we want to have smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, the time frame. So just bear that in mind when I look at the framework shortly about, about, about how they should be. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time frame. On page three of uh, the workbook, you'll see um, the smart goals um, explanations there. And then just another thing is the wheel of life. Now, some of you may have seen this before. But the wheel of life is 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 very much used in in um, in coaching. You know, typically, if I were coaching you on a business coaching perspective, uh, I would start with something like this. It's really what are the different areas of your life. Now, there's different wheels of life. If you search it, um, this is just an example. It's a pretty. It's it's got eight things. It's pretty. This is pretty comprehensive. It's your physical health, your emotional, spiritual health, your recreation and leisure, leisure your career and educational aspirations, your money and personal finances your personal development, social and family relationships, your marriage and your partner. So the, 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 the way it's a will is because let's say my physical health is 8 out of 10 and my marriage partner is 2 out of 10. Just imagine it on the, uh, on, the, um, uh, on the line here. So my physical health is a 10 out of 10. My marriage partner is a 2 out of 10. My social family relationship is, a, is maybe a 6. My personal development is a 2. And my money and personal finances is a, is a nine. I'm cooking it on my finances, but my marriage and partners are two. But it means my wheel is going to be is not going to roll very nicely. So ideally, you want you want as much congruence with all these different sections as possible. That's the, in the ideal world. Um, obviously, we can't work on them all at the same time, and we 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 you know sometimes one is lacking a bit more than the other. But the idea of the wheel of life is that typically we are. We are congruent across all these all these different areas of our life. I mean, if you don't have physical health, you're not have, you're not going to be able to love your spouse or your marriage or your partner. Um, if you if you're not taking much recreation or leisure, you're not going to have the energy to work on your money and personal finances or your career. So it, it's good that we we have um, a, a fairly broad uh, aspect when you look at our goals. But it's just something to think about. 
um, um, in, and it's quite nice to have a bit of a framework when you're thinking about different areas of our life. Okay. Um, so goal setting can be done in different in different periods. We can look at a, lo a long-term plan or 10, 10 or 20 year plan, uh, a big hoderi. It's one of the ways is, is looking at art is a big hoderi or dashes goal or BHAG. And uh, that's quite often spoken about. Your, what is your BHAG? What are you looking at? Um, just different examples um, I can think of. When I started uh, Chorus Property Group um, many years ago, it was 2000, 2000, 2002, 2003, um, you know, and a year or two after that, when we started focusing on rentals at the time, uh, we're going to manage 40,000 units. We're going to manage 40,000 units. I don't know why I came up with that figure. And we were managing, I think, 20 units at the time. And like, it just it was just ridiculous. In hindsight, it was, I mean, it's particularly ridiculous, but that's kind of the point. What is my big Hoderi Dashes goal? It meant that when I was sit sitting in a small little office on Belvedere Road, I would make phone calls to the biggest landlords in Joburg. Like in hindsight, what was I doing? I would make phone calls to the biggest landlords in Joburg and fly up to see these guys because we we're going to have 40,000 units. So it just shows you how that BHAG determines your long term success. Just another example, and I don't want to speak on her behalf, but some of us may know Carmen Gamilden of Meraki Property Sol Solutions. She was, uh, um, she, when I first met her, um, both of us, she, you know, not to speak ill, but she couldn't afford to come to my office for the interview. So I went to her, her office, uh, for her home in, um, down the road, uh, or about 20 minutes down the road. It just shows how, how kind of unsophisticated we were 20 years ago. And, um, yeah, we employed her. She was amazing. She was started earning two grand a month with us, um, doing books and rental stuff and, she was earning a bit of commission on sales, but she wasn't selling much. But she said she always wanted to be a principal of her own company. Always wanted to be principal of her own company. And here she is, three, uh, 17 years later. She's had this business for three years now, two or three years. She's on her own, managing her own um, principal. She's principal agent of her own business. And uh, just did a phenomenal job serving within Chorus. Uh, ended up being operations director, was managing 70 staff. Um, but I don't want to be funny, but in essence, her BHAG um, was she wanted to be principal of her own business. Now, at the time, it was probably a silly thing to think, but that was a dream, and it, created, and it gave her the courage to, um, to, 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 to be determined to then ultimately have her own business, and now she's doing phenomenally well, just absolutely amazing. So those are the kind of things. A lie is a dream, guys. Where do you want to be in your business? And let's, let's put this in a business perspective. Where would you like to be in 10, 20 years' time? Would you like to be owning your own business? Would you like to be... It's, it, the, the idea of it, it's impractical or silly, take away, take away that filter, if I, can, if I can suggest. And what is your BHAG? Okay. Um, and then you can have medium-term plans, which is five or 10 years, short-term plans, one to five years, and in your close-term plans, which we're going to get more into now, um, for 12 months. And what I've done is I've done, um, uh, what I've done is I've procreated, if you look at um, page four of your workbook, I've, I've shown you, I've got the Wheel of Life, and at the bottom I've got your big hood area, as just uh, your BHAG, you can write that down, you can start thinking about that. Guys, you've got to dream, eh? And it's, and it's challenging because all of us, all of us are busy, first of all, and all of us are in survival mode. I would imagine, because I'm in survival mode most of the time, right? Um, I acknowledge that. I acknowledge that. Um, being, dreaming and and thinking and planning for the future does not mean that you're not thinking of the surviving today. It does not mean. One of the ways of getting through a survival mode today is by looking at your long-term goals because that's going to drive your motivation and your expertise and your desire to grow today to get better, which is going to take you out of survival mode. So you've got to allow yourself every now and again to get yourself off the, out of the valley onto the mountain to do that, um, to do that thinking and that, and that dreaming. Allow yourself to dream. So what I've done on page five is that um, what I did, for, I've done myself personally, and I've done this for my wife as well because she's not naturally like this. I'm naturally kind of the visionary person uh, where she's not naturally, is that I've taken this sheet and I've actually had a different sheet for 15 to 20 years, five to 10 years, and one to five years. 
uh, and in plus 10, 12 months, under all these different things, spiritual, life partner, family, friends, money, career, leisure, and health. Um, and just giving her a framework that she can write down um, different things. So it doesn't mean that I'm going to have an answer for my spiritual for every single, you know, 50 long range, medium term, short term, and close term. It means that I'm thinking about where I'd like to be spiritually in 20 years' time or my life partner, my life partner, 20 years' time, up, um, my, you know, I've got a strong goal on that. Um, so, so that would be there. But it just gives a bit of a framework to, because some of us have never done this before. And what I'm trying to do is we don't get perfections and there's a lot of different models about how you can do goal setting and that kind of stuff. All I'm presenting is a model that you could use that it gets you thinking and out of the box. I've got this big goal for my maybe my career and my job, my business. Um, and some of you may not even thought of further than, to, than, than today. Uh, and that's fine. What I'm suggesting and encouraging you to do is think a bit broader and a bit, and a bit bigger. Because that will help drive what you do, the decisions you make today. Okay, it's not easy sometimes. I'm not saying it's an easy exercise, um, but but I think it's worth it. Um, yeah, I remember in my twenties, um, I had a strong desire to, um, you know, just and it's, there again. Sorry, if it's personal and it's maybe not a great example, but I before I even met my wife and before I even kind of was very good at dating. I saved for three and a half years for a ring for, for my future wife, 500 rand a month. Um, and it, it wasn't like I knew someone. It was, she was three or four years away from it. And uh, it meant that when I could have the ring, uh, it, when I needed to buy the ring, I had a whole lot of funds for that. It's 500 rand a month plus interest over three and a half years starts to, uh, starts to become a, a particular figure. Um, and that is because I had a desire that, uh, and it meant that the way I acted in my 20s was, uh, was to become the right person so I can attract the right person. So having that goal, that well, I can't remember if I wrote that down, but there were a whole lot of goals I wrote down. Goals I wrote down in my twenties, but one of them was um, was a particular kind of uh, marriage I wanted. That meant I had to be the better person um, because of that goal. Now, could family, friends, money, uh, where do you want to be in your career, um, etc., um, or leisure? Write those things down in a different in a different periods. Um, can I encourage you to do that, please? So in summary, um, on the goal setting side of things, uh, it's embrace and develop a growth mindset. Um, it's written goals yield high returns in the future. Uh, all goals must be smart. Your BHAG will set the direction and timing for other goals. Um, and uh, lastly, start today. And it can be messy, guys. I mean, um, I can show you behind here, those are some of the goals I've got um, just on, on the side there. And it's just in front of the seat where I sit. And sometimes I just write it down. I put it there. I'm driving a, um, a polo at the moment, but I thought to myself, man, I'm looking at the GLC Merc. And one day I really want to afford that. So I'm not driving a, port, a, a, a polo. Um, I love my polo, by the way. It's fantastic. I love it. Um, and, but, but I put that down there, you know what? I'm just going to put it up there. And if it happens or not, it's not the big deal. This is my goal. At the end of the year, I'd wanted to, um, you know, I wanted to be in wilderness um, drinking a glass of wine. I don't think I'm going to hit that goal this year, but at least maybe I'll go down the road and drink a, a glass of wine. And that's my longer term thingy, which is a long story. Um, and then there's other shorter term stuff. Um, so it can be as messy as it doesn't have to be. Just put something up, guys. There must be dreams. Oh, yeah. Um, I, down there, um, oh, you can't see it, but um, I, I actually I wanted to do a 100K um, trail race this year, but it didn't happen. Early in the year, I decided it wasn't going to happen. But you know what? I actually lived out part of it because part of the route I was going to run, I actually did with my brother. So actually, in fact, I did live it out because, um, uh, yeah. So it's interesting how, and it's, it's actually quite scary when you do write stuff down, how that, as you look back in five or 10 years' time, it's quite scary how, how often those results come and happen. But you need some kind of direction, um, guys and ladies. Um, and uh, many of you do have that. You wouldn't have been in this career unless you probably had some of those things. But I just encourage you to please put it in writing and use this time of year to, to really um, do some planning on that. Hopefully we can uh, agree on that. It does take effort, guys. And that's one of the reasons I'm offering a, a coaching session. Um, 
and we'll do it we'll do it in groups uh, depending on how many people um, uh, want to do it we'll do it in groups of three or four just so we can keep it smaller and then we'll be accountable to say we're going to be coaching next week friday at 10 o'clock uh, for example and we need to have thought about this stuff and written down as much as we can before we meet on our coaching uh, it's the sense of accountability so that we can actually get it done. Well, I'm not saying we need to work on this every day of the week. You do it once every quarter or once a year. You you write up so you count some of the key stuff. You put it on your wall, your fridge, or your bathroom mirror, and uh, and that's going to help you get going for, for every day. Okay. Cool. Can we get into the agent um, business plan? Um, let's, let's get on to the nuts and bolts. This business plan again is um, is going to be different for different folk, right? So an experienced agent is going to look at that and say, okay, I need to fine tune what I'm doing. Uh, a new agent is going to say, she's I didn't even know that stuff existed. Now we've got a big mix on the, on our group today of of both, so um, uh, it does it doesn't it doesn't really matter. So learn what you can from it, um, but I do think it's the huge messaging for for both for both extremes. The rookie agent who who's just coming into the industry and an experienced agent who needs to refine or fine tune what they're doing. Okay. First of all is know your history. And if we go to our workbook page six, um, we've got to know our results. So um, I just thought it easier just to put it on the, on, the, uh, on the workbook. How many contacts have we made for the year? How many daily average contacts are we making? Um, did we have a client event? Not everyone's going to do that, but did we do a client event? How many total database touches did we do during the year? So the database, we've got a database of 10, 20, 50, 100 people. How many touches did we do with them? Ideally, we should be touching them every month or every three months at least. And we, we're adding that up. New contacts, how many new contacts did we add to the database? How many listing appointments or valuation appointments did we, uh, were set? How many valuation appointments were, were met? How many mandates did we sign? Um, buy appointments, how many were set and how many were met? Offers signed, uh, mandates, and then actual mandates sold, total units sold, um, total value sold, the average sale price, total gross commission, average commission. Now, the thing is that I would suggest, and I'm going to um, be so bold as to say, most of us don't have these figures. Uh, most of us don't have these figures. Um, I'm suggesting that if you don't have these figures, that you, you start tracking it in the new year. And I know it's tedious, and I know that's an effort, but unless you know your numbers, you can't plan for the year ahead properly. We need to know, ideally, the world's best agents know how many contacts have made for the year, and out of those contacts, they know they've made X number of sales. So, for example, they made 100 contacts, they make one sale, which means if they want to make two sales, they need to make 200 contacts. So it's a numbers game, which means it's going to help them with the daily discipline when they get onto their mornings. Okay. I know, guys, this is quite high-level stuff, and it gets quite... Um, uh, it gets quite uh, not technical, but it gets quite fine tuning. And I'm going to put you know, pushing some buttons here. But are we professionals? Are we, are, are we professionals? We need to know our numbers. So ideally, we should be looking at our past results uh, in a business plan like this, so that we can be productive going forward. But if we don't have those numbers, let's start tracking them. Let's at least be aware that these numbers exist. You, we, I've often spoken to our team about the sales funnel. You need 100 contacts maybe to get one sale. 100 prospects to maybe get one sale, maybe 100 prospects then become, say, 50 valuations, which become, say, 10 mandates or 20 mandates, depending on your experience level. And then out of those 10 mandates, you might get five sales. I'm making up those numbers. An experienced agent will get better numbers. An experienced agent will get a better quality mandate, and therefore the closing rate will be higher. So your, your hit rate is going to be, it's going to be different. Um, but but you've, got to know your, you've got to know your numbers. Um, so know your results and know your numbers, which is going back to page six. How many contacts? Uh, what is our, basically what I've just said now? What is our percentages? So the metric is contacts made to appointment set, appointment set to appointments gone to, uh, appointments gone um, onto contract signed, gone to onto contract signed, contract signed to properties transferred, and then contacts to sold. How many offers to purchase have we bring in to get one sale? These are the numbers guys, we should know. We should be tracking. And I know it's a numbers game, but we for, for successful and professional business um, salespeople are doing this stuff. Okay. And third thing is know your market. 
we should know how many new listings are in the area per year. How how much is uh, how much is on the market at any one time? Um, how many deals? Were, how many? So I live in Claremont Lindfray, and next door is Claremont um, is Hartford Village. It's a fairly kind of designated area, or the locals would know what is Lindfray and what is Hartford Village. There's certain agents that operate only in Hartford Village, and they do exceptionally well because it's a high turnover area. I would imagine those this top two agents, which is head properties and Norgot properties, they would know how many mandates are in the area for the year, how many sales in the area, what's a turnover for the year. In other words, there's 100 sales in the, per year approximately um, in that market. If I've got a 50% shareholding, I'm going to get 50 sales for the year. That's my target. I'm, I'm putting these thoughts out, guys, that we need to be, we just need to start to getting to know. It. Now, some of our rookie agents, might take a while to get here, but an experienced agent should be knowing this stuff. I, I would, I would, uh, and maybe you do, uh, which is fantastic. Um, and it's because when we're doing business planning for the year ahead, if I'm saying I'm going to make a, a, let's say 30 sales for the year, but there's only 30 sales made in that, in the suburb that I'm focusing on for the year, what are the chances of me getting 30 sales? Ain't going to happen uh, because no one's got 100%, um, no one's got 100% shareholding. At best, you may be a 30 to 50% shareholding if you're really, really good and there's not that much competition. So um, know your market. Um, what is the average sales price? You know, and also typically, what's your commission area? I mean, certain areas that, I mean, I was in Joburg and typically it was around about a 4% uh, commission. Even Pam Golding were at 4%. Um, it was a slightly higher priced area or in Joburg terms, quite in Cape Town terms, quite low, but... Um, so, so what is your average commission going to be in that in that area? How did it, how did it do the dynamic dynamics work? So, basically, on this first point on your business plan is knowing the numbers, knowing your results, knowing your the numbers. Um, that's the percentages and knowing your market. What's actually happening in your market? Uh, you can get this information off Lightstone um, um, and so forth, but it, you should be tracking it. You should be master of your area. So every single listing that comes on in your area. You should know. You should be there, there like a bear. You should be getting your, um, you should be getting your uh, alerts coming in, um, on property twenty four and private property. So I mean, I, I just I sold my house in Parkview last year, and um, I put I, I initially sold it through our own business, um, was marketing it through our own business, and the the day it went on um on the internet on property twenty four through our, my own listing, the next morning I got a phone call from from another agent. Uh, it means that she's not not my favorite agent and she's a bit been in the market for 45 years and she can hardly walk. But the fact is that she did the basics of phoning me the next day. She knew what was happening in the market. That's the kind of that's the kind of attentiveness. The guys in Hartford Village here and Lou Norgard, sometimes I want to meet with him just for a coffee catch up. He said, No, I can't make it now, I've got to run off. He just had a phone call and he's running off. These oaks are they these guys are reacting very quickly. Um, so, but we got to know our numbers. Does it make sense? Know your source. Where are we getting our business from? There again, page seven on your workbook. Um, am I getting it from past clients? Um, am I getting it from private sellers? Expired listings. That's um, on property twenty four, private property. When you're following up, and there's a mandate, or you're knocking on a door with a sales pro a property with a for sale sign, and uh, when the mandate's expired, am I getting it from that? Uh, am I getting it from advertising and branding? This, these are where my lead sources are coming from. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, circle prospecting, um, traditional farming, direct mailing, open houses, investors, builders, uh, agent referrals, database referrals, other referrals, uh, property portals, um, and others. So we need to write down what is our top, typically what are our top three sources. And we need to, we need to know typically where are we getting our leads from? And then we can double down on the top one, which we'll talk about in a second. Okay, so identify your top three and then identify the one you'll focus on most. Double down. There again, we need to know we need to know our sources. Maybe we maybe we haven't even been aware of that or haven't been tracking that. Um, but but we need to we need to we need to kind of know these things. Okay, and tracking it. Okay, know your sources. That's number that's part number two of the of the business plan. Number three is set your goals. So this is this is another business plan. This is a similar one. I've got an A3 business plan, which was supplied by Lee of, of Monopoly Training, but I have adjusted it a little bit to reflect 
um, what was in point number one, which is your numbers. So how many contacts am I going to make for the year? And then I can then set my daily target. If you set 20 a day, that's 20 times 48 weeks um, times by five, that's 100 times 4,800 people. Um, my average daily contacts. I mean, if, you, if you're going to make one sale for 100, 100 contacts, or one sale out of 200 contacts, many of you, some of the some of your new guys are making 300, 400 contacts before you even get in your mandate. Now that number will dramatically increase as you get into the market, but um, but knowing your numbers. So if I'm going to make, if I'm, my target for the year as a new agent is five sales for the year, which I don't think is unrealistic. If you really push it and you're absolutely committed, we've got team members that have done more than that in their first year. Um, then you're going to run the numbers and say, "Freak, I need to be knocking on 30 doors a week, uh, maybe." Okay, so total contacts, average daily contacts, the event, client events hosted, total database contacts, etc. Listing, how many listing appointments do I want to set? So I would start at the bottom. I ideally want um, five units sold. I should know in my area that the average price is a million rand. Funny enough, all our agents around the country, the average price is, is around about a million, 1.1 million, which is the national average. Um, so if my total unit sold is is five units and a million rand each, it's five million rand, um, then at 5% commission, then it's X amount of turnover. In order to get that turnover, I need to make X number of, phone, X number of viewing appointments. So if my mandate hit rate is going to be one out of three, especially as a rookie, then, then I need to be doing... Um, Say to get one mandate, I need to be doing at least three listing appointments, uh, evaluation appointments. To get three evaluation appointments, I need to make 30 phone calls or 100 phone calls or whatever it is. Okay, so we may not know 100% your details, but at least think about it and be aware that knowing that as I make my phone calls, because when we're in the trenches, all I'm seeing is the 100 phone calls I'm going to make. All I'm seeing is the next phone call I'm doing. Believe me, guys, I'm in the same boat. Um, what I'm seeing is, is the next five phone calls I'm making today. But if we've got a plan, we're doing it for a purpose. Those five phone calls are going to get me those five phone calls closer to that deal. Now, some of you experienced agents may know this, and um, it's a little bit less, less, little bit less messy. But if, if it's an experienced agent, you're doing really well, and you've got 20 sales for the year, you're not going to hit 25, 30 sales and need to change what you're doing. And this kind of framework might, might assist you. Okay. Um, then use a double down plan. This is basically what we're saying um, is what are the sources to double down on? Um, the one or two sources. Then what is the time and effort I'm going to place on that? Uh, what are the resources um, I'm going to, uh, to put on that? And then what are the skills I need to develop? Maybe I need to get better at my scripts. Maybe I need to my resources. I need to make sure that and, and time and effort that I'm putting aside three hours, four days a week on it. I mean, I've listened to this one car, one podcast called 31 Minutes. And uh, it's this older agent that's talking to this younger agent as like a mentorship stuff. And he's he's always talking like, he's always pushing this guy. Uh, and I think I think it's, it's quite like the hectic. But anyway, this young guy, I mean, he he's there. He gets to work at six in the morning and finishes at seven, eight o'clock at night for three days a week. And he does his, and he does and he changes his his and he hits like huge numbers of phone calls because he's got a massive determination and a massive why uh, about being the the number one in his office number one in his region uh, it's an Australian Australian guy um, but it, but then he, um, but he is doubling down on on certain lead generation activities and uh, the reason I brought that up is that he's allocating time and resources to do his plan. Okay, double down plan. That's knowing the knowing your uh, your key source of sources of leads and doubling down on that. Okay, and being disciplined around it, having a plan around it. It takes time, guys. Just think about this. It takes time, and and even just a meeting with my brother this morning. It's actually quite difficult to focus and to say no. That's what I'm realizing because I do so many different things. There's always so many shiny objects out there, but to say no and to really discipline on, I'm going to be doing this, these three things. Um, these are my main sources. I'm going to be having these strategies for these sources and I'm going to double down on it. Uh, and then I'm going to give it a push for three months to to, to give it the best possible results. I, th I, I personally think things like circle, circle prospecting, um, as Lee DeBet uh, talks about, um, and Steve Johnson talks about, 
uh, is an amazing um, is an amazing uh, opportunity. Uh, it, it takes patience though, because you have to go time and time again to a particular suburb, knocking on doors and phone calling. But that's how you get. So, I mean, I'm looking at the areas now where where I'm staying in Cape Town, where I've, we're moving Cape Town. There's some very established agencies here. It's like I, I, I was last in living in Cape Town ten years ago. It's like time has stood still. Same agents, but there are the one area though, the Ronnebosch Golden Mile, where, where I used to live. There used to be Pam Golding used to be the the queen of that area, but it was their best. Um, Pearl Sparks used to operate from there. She was there was the, Pam Golding's best agent. Um, they were they were the best agency in the area, and there was like no ways anyone was going to beat them. They're, they're non-existent at the moment. Non-existent. It's because other agencies have done the discipline and, be, and got their marketing and got their um, marketing as in personal marketing. Personal, you can't rely on your principal to provide all your marketing. It comes down to the agent. The reason why Pam Gold is not doing well there is because the agent is not so good. The reason why Pam Golding in Parkview, Pam Golding as an agent in Parkview has gone down is because their, their top agent has moved to Cape Town. It's not about Pam Golding. It's about it's about the agent. I love Pam Golding. I love the XP better, but um, yeah, you know, and there's some great agencies out there. Um, but it ultimately comes down to the agent. Um, the agency can help, but the agent is what is a key key thing. So a new sort of business. Um, just to to think about to choose one new source of business and write out the necessary steps to get started. On page ten, we have um, we have this step one, two, three, four, five. I am going to, for example, I am going to have a social media strategy this year. I'm going to be one of my new lead generation sources is being on Instagram. So the source is um, social media. Step one is learn Instagram. Um, what are people doing? Maybe step two is find out strategies. Um, by the way, um, Global U has um, has a complete social media um, strategy. I mean, it's you can free download it. Let me know if you want it. I can send it to you. Uh, it's a three or four pager on, this is how exactly what you do every day of the week or every week on your social media strategy. So maybe this year you want to do, but then you have to actually have a plan on it, guys. I've, I, I'm, I speak to mentor many of you and week after week, we're doing the same thing, which I think is amazing. And I think some of you guys, some of the guys are really making fantastic progress, uh, especially coming from zero to, to becoming um, uh, operating and producing agents. But in addition to that, as we get more experience, we need to be planning uh, as a business person to, um, to then do certain other lead generation sources. So for example, it may be, um, it may be having a, a social media presence, but you need a plan. Some of us in the older generation, like myself, is a little bit more challenging. Um, okay, and then um, one of the things that one of the we all know one of the best ways to uh, to build um, long term referrals is to have a database uh, have, a, have a database that we feed into. And what is our database value proposition? What is the one thing you can do each month to add value to your database? So when we ask for referral, so our database is what's going to give us a referral. A network, right? Um, it's going to give us our referrals and so forth. And that's the, the world's best agents are typically working off um, a lot of their businesses coming from referrals. They've got great relationships with that database. But what is our plan for that database? It's not just going to happen. What is our plan? So we can write down ideally um, what are we doing month one? I'm going to do a drop by uh, and say, welcome to the year, et cetera. Or I'm going to send, and month two, I'm going to send out an email. Maybe I'm going to send out a, um, an email every month. Um, maybe I'm going to maybe I'm going to find out when their birthdays are, and every month I'm going to you know, I'm going to send them a birthday card. But think of some kind of a basic strategy is better than nothing, because a lot of our team, and the only re re reason I reference that is because I'm you know I'm mentoring and, and working with some of our team members. Um, is that we are tracking, we're adding to our database, but what are we doing with the database? What is our plan with the database? It might be in uh, January, February, I'm sending an email, and March, I'm calling. Um, April, May, I'm sending an email, and um, June, I'm going to call them. At least have some kind of plan. Okay. And then what am I, how am I going to be growing my database? Also page 12 on the, on the, um, on the, on the, on the, on the workbook, um, cold calling or circular prospecting, Maybe we, we have a target to add one a day. Are we are we adding to our so we should be speaking to 
uh, or ideally in the ideal world, speaking to 20 new people a day, when I listen to these podcasts and, and talk to top performers, um, they're saying 20 people a day, they're getting new, they're, new, new, uh, new, uh, they're talking to 20 people a day, new people. Um, you know, to do that, you need a plan. To do that, you need some kind of discipline. And let's say you see five new people a day. Um, but uh, ideally, you want to be adding a, a, um, that you're onto your database from the, from those contacts. So cold calling or circle prospecting added, social media followers added, cold internet prospects added, um, general contacts, client contacts. I mean, if, it, if, you, if, you, if you sell a client, your, your seller and your buyer should be added to your database. You should be relating to them. We all got, all of us have got stories that we've never heard of our state, from our state agent again. Um, someone who bought or sold, um, you know, or we rented from or whatever. Um, Guys, are you back again? My apologies. Um, the power went off and my um, my my, my Wi-Fi changes. One of the big one of the big blessings of living in a load shed country. Okay, let me just change. Okay, we're back. Back in action. Um, just get this. Okay, database growth goals, I ideally once a day. Video social media strategy. Um, if you look on page 13, um, ideally we want to be having um, one a video plan. There again, it might be something we should do, you know, quarter to one, two or three once you've got your other plan in, in place. But ideally on our social media plan, we want to do one, one a week for 48 weeks and a daily social media plan, which you got one a day for 48 weeks as well. Um, it's one per week and then one per day. So on Mondays, for example, I could be doing, um, let me just think here. Um, look here. On, on one but Monday, I could be adding to my story. Um, on Tuesday, I can do a photograph. Uh, on Wednesday, I can put my video in. On Thursday, I can do a photograph. And then Friday, I can do a reel, for example. And we just say, those are that we do every day. And part of our lead generation actions is that we're just doing that, um, is, is putting that content in. Ideally, if we could make content for the month ahead or the week ahead, we can then just copy and paste that content in. Okay. Guys, this is why we really work hard. This is why we get up at five or six in the morning so that we can be at our desk at half or seven so that we can create this content, so that we can put it online. It's, it's not going to happen. This is why that extra half an hour is just what, what's going to enable you to do the social media strategy, which is going to enable you to get that many more sales. Okay. Um, okay, cool. I'm going to bring some more lot. Um, and in a new morning, uh, we've, we've spoken about this uh, morning routine. Um, you can't improve your production unless you make a significant change to your morning routine. We've spoken about that, but you can't improve your production unless you make a significant um, uh, change to your morning routine. So we're talking about weekdays, having a routine every weekday and ideally one weekend, one weekend day, hopefully Saturday, um, and maybe making it two weekends a year, uh, a month. But top performers are are working are working on on a, a bit on their weekend every sec maybe twenty weekends for the year, but then plan those weekends in ahead. Um, say from nine o'clock to twelve o'clock or eight to one, you're doing your lead generation. Maybe you're doing your social media um, production for the week or something like that. Okay, for example, a strong morning routine might look like thirty minutes of skills building, doing scripts, <clears throat> um, read, watching a podcast. Um, about how people do things, but skills building, a lot of it's about scripts, learning our scripts, and 90 minutes of outbound lead generation, that's a minimum, 30 minutes of lead follow-up, and 60 minutes of content creation, that would be for social media or an article or whatever. 
uh, and it can look, it can look, you can adjust it depending on the day. But ideally, what we're saying is that you shouldn't be doing appointments in the morning, buy or sell appointments. You should be doing that in the afternoon. Okay, I know this is difficult, guys. I know it's challenging. I know it's, um, I know it's not easy. Um, but uh, time and time again, I I study the top achievers, and this is what they're doing. They're being very disciplined, and I'm learning this myself. Because in my game, I've got a lot of distractions. All of us do. But um, with our strong BHAG, with our strong goals that we set, and strong determination, um, we can then get that focus. Okay. Well, someone who always inspires me is one of our team members, Temba. When he started with us in May last year, early May, he said he is going to get a mandate by the end of the month. And luckily, he was he was courageous enough and bold enough and had enough ballsy enough to actually get it done. Unfortunately, he did miss his deadline by one day, but he did on the second of June have two mandates closed. What well on timber? But he's always inspired me. He just gets it done. And similarly, if we can have these morning disciplines on page fourteen of the workbook. What are we doing at five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine nine o'clock, nine thirty, ten a.m. You do it how you want to. But being aware of, of this and being accountable for this plan. I know it's difficult, guys, but I am going to be accountable at half past seven in the morning to be in my office, to move my desk, and I'm going to do X, Y, Z. Bear in mind, it's easy to do, but it's easy not to do. Um, how determined am I to succeed? How, how serious am I really? And I'm speaking to myself now uh, as well. Okay. Um, and then we, we, we're starting to close off now. The financial model is your income. I'm not going to go too deeply into this. On page 15, know what your revenue, um, what your what your revenue goals are. My bond commissions, my commission revenue, my bond commissions, um, and uh, revenue share in the EXP model. The amazing part of it is that you get revenue share. You also get shares when you sell your first property. You get two thousand rand shares when you um, attract agents on. You get four thousand rand for their first shares. Um, so, and there's other revenues that you may get, referrals, et cetera. So your total net revenue, um, and then you've got expenses. Just bear in mind, you've got a vehicle, you've got a bank fees. Um, these, all these things, by the way, if you look at the bottom, it's got total expenses. Your net operating taxable income is your revenue less your expenses. So bear in mind is that when you have a parking ticket um, at a shopping center, when you've done a business appointment, record that. When you're spending money on photography or you, um, you're doing your, you've got your cloud fee, of which XP's cloud fee is particularly low, by the way. Um, just saying, um, the um, for the value you get, um, or you're printing boards, or there's other miscellaneous stuff, or you're spending money on your cell phone. You've got to keep those slips, and when you get income in, um, you then submit it to the person doing doing your tax, or when you do your own tax. So it's a, it's a business deductible, it's a deductible expense. So all it means is that you get a little bucket or something. Every time you do an expense, you just put it in that bucket, okay? Or in that folder or that envelope. Can I just encourage you to do that? Because that is a tax deductible expense. But there again, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but as professional business people, I mean, I learned this stuff 20 years ago, 25 years ago when I first went to, uh, who was that chap that's, um, uh, these old oaks from, um, C, these, these old toppies from Seif and, uh, um, Andy Tutt was one of the guys, and it was the, the principal of the Chief Pilots Office. Amazing. They just they were principals in the industry and they were at the Institute of Estate Agents doing the training. And and this is this is no different to the training I got 25 years ago. Uh, it takes time. It's for some of you new guys, it's all new information, and what you know, what am I gonna do with it? Like I need to do my parking tickets and put it somewhere. Um, you'll get used to it. I'm just for the for the experienced agents, make sure you're doing the stuff. For the rookie agents, be aware that it is a thing and that over time uh, you will learn to ride that bicycle. Okay. But be aware that your business is costing you money um, and uh, and you need to be performing. You need to be getting that income in. The last thing I want to do is talk about life at the new level. And so what I mean by this, um, my year this year um, looks like um, my year this year so I'm eating at McDonald's once a month. I'm driving a, po uh, a polo, which I'm so happy with, second-hand polo. Um, you know, uh, I um, I walk my dogs at the park because I can't afford to go to, you know, to the beach. So that's my year this year. What does it look like this year? If we want to live, grow our expectations, 
uh, for 2024, when you start thinking, what is the life I do want to live? I want to be driving that GLP, a GLC. Um, uh, I want to, I want to be able to take my wife out for a date once a month. Uh, I want to be able to, you know, g- give my kids a decent birthday present, for example. Mm-hmm. So it's just a bit of a, a mental exercise to grow expectations. Um, uh, a bit of the expectations on, um, on what is the level of life I want to be living in 2024. Now, you might not reach it immediately, but it just gets our expectations. So just the last thing I want to touch on is that we kind of get what we expect in a way. Now, I, I've used this example a number of times. So my brother, um, we were around with on the weekend, um, when he left school, he did an apprenticeship at, at uh, my dad's company, printing apprenticeship. So all the apprenticeships before he got along were getting 60% on the apprenticeship, 60%, 70%. My brother comes along. He was an average student, um, fairly average student. He got in 90%, 90%. So he, he went to a so-called better school and all this kind of stuff. So now all the other appies were also getting 90%. What changed? <laughs> Nothing changed. There's the same guys were now getting 90%. It's just because someone was getting 90% around them and said, but this is actually possible. We need to be creating for ourselves. And some of the conversations I've had with some of you this year is that um, it is possible. Sometimes we hold ourselves back. We're not even aware of it. Uh, and that's even a journey I'm going on with myself this year is what is, what am I holding? What am I holding myself back? Sometimes it's my own expectations. Sometimes I think it's the other person's issue, but it's actually mine. I'm not forgiving that person or I'm not doing this or I'm thinking that they're expecting that or whatever. And it's actually me projecting and being a barrier on the other person or, or on the situation. I'm holding myself back. It's got nothing to do with the other person. Mm-hmm. It's the same with my expectation is that if I'm living in a particular house or I'm uh, at a particular level of my, of my business, it's sometimes because I'm, I'm not actually adjusting my mindset and my expectations. It irritates me that some guys that that don't work as hard uh, in, in, in a good way, and it's my issue, again, if, when this irritates me, is that I see, see other guys uh, be, you know, be successful in certain areas. How did they do that? And it's just, just because they, they had no self-barriers. I hold myself back in so many different areas. So it's just something to think about, and that's what the life at the new level really does, is help us uh, understand um, our barriers and um and so forth. Just something to think about. There again, there's no perfect answer. You're not going to get this 100%, but it gets us to think about these things. That's all I'm trying to do is put, help push you out the boat out for you so you can think about these things. Okay, so we're landing. We're going to land now. Um, so my wish is that you win in 2024. My heart's desire, my deep desire is that every one of you um, are going to have an unbelievably successful 2024. I do believe in you. I do believe you can do it with a bit of hard work, a bit of planning, and um, we'd love to would love to see you succeed. There's my details. Um, please contact me. Contact me if you would like any assistance. If you'd like to join a coaching uh, kind of um, a meeting, um, I, I would I would run towards it. By the way, um, you know, a coaching call like that is typically um, on on a one to one coaching that would be between two and five thousand rand. Typically, if you were to go to a professional coach. Um, I'm not quite accredited as a special coach. I've got a lot. I've gone to lots of coaching training, but here you've got someone in the industry who is willing to do it for you for free. Um, so yeah, I would I would love to assist you. And and quite frankly, if you're competing with me down the road, I will help you just as much. In fact, many I don't think any of you are, but it doesn't really matter. I want I I want you to do uh, well, uh, and that comes with the journey and it starts with with planning. Okay, cool. There I am. We've done um, well before. Um, 11, uh, half past 10. But yeah, are there any questions? Feel free to um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, anybody, anyone can put up their hand and ask questions. Please do. If you don't have any questions, that's fine. So let me just take a photograph. So he's all here. Um, hey, David. Yes, go, Solomon. David. Go ahead. David. I can hear can you. you. Can... Yeah, there we are. Go can for you... it. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, okay. So tell me, um, in terms, could you put a plan of trying to connect with 
your neighboring agents because I'm finding it difficult to work, to choose agents to work with in the area because mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reasons, a lot of these agents want to work alone. Um, you know, they don't want to partner with anybody for anything. Um, is that a productivity issue to work with other agents? Because I'm still struggling to do that. In fact, sure. I'm struggling to get feed, a proper feedback in terms of people in the area trying to work with you. From a different company, that's what I mean. So why would um, why would you want to work with someone? I'm not saying it's not a good thing. Um, uh, I'm not saying it's, it's not a good thing, but why would you want to... Um, work with someone in some areas, it also depends on area to area. There's some areas which are very collaborative and there's some areas where, you know, every agent's the enemy. I, I tend to be on the collaborative side of things, but um, is there a particular strategy as to why you want to work with the agents? Um, sometimes I've got clients and those other agents have got the needs of the other clients. Uh, in that same area. So in terms of the stock, I might have an yeah. expensive property, but that agent has got a medium price kind of property that that client needs. Yeah. So instead of that client suffering, when I'm working with another agent, it's good that then that whole thing becomes a referral. Yeah, look, I, I I personally think it's great to build relationship with the agents uh, in your in one's area. Um, you're going to, I would imagine, you're going to get resistance up front. But if you seem to be non-threatening and and supportive, and maybe just add value or just to, um, ask for a coffee with no agenda, um, then it, it might be worth it. So it might be worth adding them to your contacts um, database. And then having having a strategy that you that of of maybe your contacts plan for them would be calling them once a month or once every three months, um, or telling them about something happening happening in the area, something of value, or did they know this or um, the local councillor's details or something like that. So um, I think it's worth reaching out. You're going to you're going to break through the you're going to break through with some of them. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. If you think it's got some business relevance, then then absolutely, I would have maybe maybe add it to one of your lead sources for, that you work on for the for the next quarter and see how far you get with that. Because it could lay a really good foundation for the future. I mean, uh, Asians once you get past the um, yeah. once you get past the, right. uh, the the barrier, you find them most of them are are just human like you and I that actually are so they've all got insecurities and when you get past that, maybe they you will find them workable. Okay, cool. Good. Um, thanks, thanks, Solomon. Any other comments or questions, guys? Are we okay? Feel free to put comments on the in the comment section. Um, if you got if it's useful or you find that it's um something that could could work for you. Um. Thanks, Lebo. I'm not sure whether I was, I was, I was, everyone's drinking from a fire hydrant that it was all a lot of content or whether it was just basic. I'm not sure where, where it hit, but um, hopefully the, there's enough there. I try to keep it relatively simple uh, so that it is, it is obtainable and something that we can actually work with. Okay. Even if you implement just some of the stuff, guys, it will, it will definitely improve us for the next year. Okay. Okay, if there aren't any more comments. We're just going to get. We're going to give it a day now. And um, thank you so much. It is half past. I did say we'd finish at half past. And uh, I wish you all the very best. And uh, we'll keep in touch. Thanks, everyone. All the very best. Cheers. Bye bye.